before I get into the message or oh, the presentation of the slides, I sensed a word for Russ. Perhaps all, perhaps someone here who is special. The Lord speaks to us through his word. And I sensed Psalms 103, verse 12, hallelujah, to 13 and 14. I will extend. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever. And the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. If I were you, I will say amen. amen. Hallelujah. For the set time has come. For the time has come. Tell your neighbor, a time has come. You know we have been rained on. And it's a terrible thing not to have money. It is a horrible thing when you don't have money. Have you ever noticed how men walk into their houses when they don't have money? They sneak in the house. You hear things like, Wani Baba Enyu Alifika Sangapi? Because he just sneaked in. <laughs> the, my <laughs> confidence is gone. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, when you don't have money, you even eat carefully, isn't it? Your confidence is gone. But I thank the word of God this morning. I thank the word of God this morning. The word of God say, you will arise and have mercy on Zion. Hallelujah. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. And you know, when the Lord favors you, hallelujah, when the Lord pours out favor on your business, when the Lord pours out favor on your career, when the Lord pours out his favor on your ministry, you begin to have impact. Praise God. Hallelujah. It no longer stops being your effort. It begins being his authority, being expressed through you so that the kingdom of heaven is, through, is revealed through you. The time has come. A time has come for the children of God to take possession in the marketplace. The, the commandment of the word of God is, he says, occupy till I come. But the reality is we have not been occupied. <laughs> but a time has come. Praise God. Hallelujah. A time has come. For the set time has come. For the set time has come. The set time for wealth transfer from the kingdom of darkness to the, from the tre hidden treasures to the kingdom of, of righteousness. The set time has come. The time, the set time has come for us to arise and shine and to occupy. A set time has come. A time has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been oppressed. We have been looked down. We have walked. You know, there is a form of humili humility, which is not actually honest humility. New Kora, where people walk like, so they walk like as if, you know, as if they have been rained on because they don't have money. And then people think, confuse that for humility. Kumbe is just, they don't have money. You realize? But our time has come. A time has come for billionaires in the body of Christ. A time has come, and that can be you and me. Hallelujah. If you don't want it, it's me I want it. Because I know, <laughs> I know how, how poverty has killed destinies. And you are likely to sin more when you don't have money. Let me repeat it and welcome Bishop Fred. Hallelujah. You are likely to, when, when you don't have money, people who tend to have jealousy 
are those who don't have resources, isn't it? And you know, jealousy is a gateway for the spirit of witchcraft, isn't it? So you end up having witches who are not actually formal witches, but in the church because of the spirit of, of jealousy. Hallelujah. But our time has come. I don't know about you, but me, for me. And the Bible says, for your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. So the nation shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory. Hallelujah. For the Lord shall build up Zion and, and he shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute. A time has come. A time has come. You who has prayed and prayed and asked and given your tithes and you have wondered, does this thing work? A time has come. At heavens are opening. I am not just speaking what I am. What I, <laughs> I am not just speaking. I know what I am speaking. Hallelujah. Heavens, when the heavens open up on your life, when the heavens open up on your business, your story changes. Hallelujah. You begin being defined by the favor of the Lord. The mercy gates open when the season, when a time in the dispensation of the time to favor you come. Your spiritual economic womb is opened, is healed. You begin to be fruitful. You begin to, um, to be mult of, of multiplication. You are still, you are seed begin to multiply and then you begin to operate in the dimension of dominion. A time has come. A time has come. Hallelujah. A season has come. A season has come for you who has been in employment and you heard clearly that you are meant to be an employer. A season has come. You are crossing over. And you need to understand that heaven operates in spiritual time zones. In the Bible, you learn of, you, we get to hear of, they were in Egypt for a certain number of years. But when the time had come, they had, God had to make provision for them to move. Praise God. There was a spiritual gateway. Every now and then the angel of the Lord used to come and stir the waters. The pool of Bethesda. That was a spiritual gate where grace is released for a specific reason of a certain people who are destined to fulfill God's will in that spiritual timeline. A time has come. A time has come. Hallelujah. A time has come. And so when in the season of remembrance, one of the expressions of God's mercy is he releases his favor. When his favor is so functional over your life, the ground that was so difficult to till begin to be so fruitful. It gets to be so easy. Hallelujah. When you have, when you begin to function in the dimension of God's favor. In the season of God's favor. But I have a caution. We can be in a season but not be in our awareness of that season. And be like that lame person who was at the pool. The grace has been stirred. But he kept on sitting and saying, Mimi. So when, you, when, when people kept on asking, how are you doing? Those are the kind of people who keep on answering two or two. Tuko tu, tunangangana. Eh? Vile uli, tuwacha. Isn't it? Ambia jirani yako mimi siko tu. Hallelujah. I just sense that word strongly when I was seated there. So now I can go into, a season has come for someone here. A season has come. 
Hallelujah. So I just want to quickly run through, um, if you can look at, for, flow with me. Um, I will, the first part of my session, I will do about 30, 40 minutes. And then the next, I will run, maybe, and maybe I'll do 30 minutes or thereabout, and then another session, 30 minutes. So then the first session, I will do a little bit of spiritual pillars that you need to be aware of for you to be able to sustainably be operating the grace that God has given us of wealth creation. Hallelujah. And the reason we need to have money is because we need to have money to influence. In my own assessment, um, they have provided that we have seven mountains of influence. One is religion. The other one is family. The other one is education. There is business on others call it economy, business stroke, economy. And then we have government, arts, and media. My own understanding is that the mountain of business or economy seems to be higher, especially for Christians, and seems to be slippery. You try to climb, <laughs> you try to climb, you find mo most, many Christians, they begin to actually <laughs> fall back. They, they keep on backsliding, isn't it? Yeah, and it has been a very challenging mountain for the Christians, but our time has come. Hallelujah. We are rising. Hallelujah. We are occupying. A time has come that manufacturers are going to be in this house of the Lord. Industries, hallelujah. Industries in the, in the church, in the church, hallelujah. And banks, owners of financial institutions in the church, hallelujah. Can you imagine, pastor, when you have, you are going to Mombasa and you, you want to rest after laboring the entire, and the entire year with your family and you have one of us here on, owning a resort in Mombasa and you walk into the gates and the watchmen are speaking in tongues, Rama, Sendere, Boko, and the, and the people who are there, hallelujah, even the waiters, they are, they are, they are waiting on you with grace, isn't it? Hallelujah. A time has come. And I want to declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every spiritual gate in the hospitality and sector, open up. Hallelujah. Open up, you spiritual gate, that the King of glory may enter. Hallelujah. We are occupying the hospitality sector. We are occupying. Hallelujah. If you don't know what this means, we, when you go to Mombasa, there is so much morally unsafe places for our children that you would want to go and have <laughs> even just rest. And it's not very secure, isn't it? And you know the children are very innocent because they are growing. But how about we have safe environment that are owned by believers, believing in the gospel? Hallelujah. But, and so that's why we need money to influence these other uh, sectors of the economy. But I want just to quickly tell you that there are seven pillars for us to be able to radiate the glory of God in the marketplace. And the starting one is hearing the voice of the Lord. The problem is we hear so much politicians. In fact, I can dare say, Pastor, that there is a high chance that we devote more to follow <laughs> what the politicians and the news on the political scene is than the word of God. But the danger is this. We are likely to become what we keep hearing. Because what we keep hearing influences our belief system. What we keep hearing influences and our belief determines what we get in our lives. And that influences our future. Our belief system, our faith is influenced by what we keep hearing because faith comes by hearing. If you keep on hearing, negativity, your faith will be on fear. 
Isn't it? Yeah. And I want us to let someone know here that cast is a man who puts his faith, his trust in another man. Isn't it? I'm not saying that you abdicate your citizen right to vote. That's okay. Please do that. Whichever candidate you like. But I also want to precaution you that don't put your hope in that man. He is likely to disappoint. He is human, isn't it? But blessed is a man who puts his hope in, in God. Praise God, isn't it? I just want to encourage us. So the first one is hearing, and I'll talk to us later on that. The next one is acknowledging the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, for you shall remember the Lord, for it is he that gives you power to do what? To make wealth. And then number three is that unfortunately, unfortunately, we pray, we give, that is okay, and that's good. But there is another level that we don't go towards. Prayer and giving is in the equation of generating what you call spiritual capital. Now, spiritual capital is like electric current flowing here. You need the requisite capacity to be able to have utilization of that current so that you can now shine. Are we together? Now, often we don't go that step further for us to create infrastructure after we have fasted, after we have prayed, after we have tithed and given offerings. We don't go a step further to make, to develop infrastructural capacity to hold this wealth. And that is a missing link. And I will give you through scripture, I will take you through scripture, many of us. Do you remember this widow of Seraphath? Eh? Is it the widow of Seraphath? Where the prophet goes and the, and, the, and the prophet asks, go gather as many empty vessels. It was a widow, isn't it? And the Bible says, as more infrastructure was available, oil kept flowing. Some of us, we need just to create that capacity. I remember... Um, the business that I, 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 I steward, we began off with 300,000 Kenyan shillings and the business wanted to begin it uh, in the house, convert one of my bedroom into an office. Around that time, one of my friends told me, uh, called me in the evening, he asked me, what do you want to do? I told him, I want to do consultancy and training, but just set up an office in my house in the bedroom. Then he told me, you are very stupid. And by the way, sometimes God uses people to speak the reality in our lives. When someone tells you you are stupid, ask why. Don't, don't be resentful. He could be right. So then I asked him why. He told me businesses that begin in the bedroom, they sleep. And the Bible says, he will bless our going out and he will bless our coming in. So I told myself, I need to be going out <laughs> and then doing what? Coming in. So that the Lord can do what? Bless. Hallelujah. With 300,000, I remember I had a season of I can't describe. I used to wake up every day at two. I used to pray in tongues like for two hours every morning at two. I remember there was a, na a nearby bar that used to make noise. <laughs> I used to raise my hand. That bar got burned down. It got burned down. It was shut. It was shut. We have, we have power within us we have AK-47s within us that we are not making use of. A time has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A time has come. I came to stir up our faith, to arise, mom, and take position, to make a liwa for a long time. But I want to let you know we are leaving Egypt, and we are not only leaving Egypt, Hallelujah. We are not going to leave Egypt empty-handed. 
No, we are not living. We are living with gold. Hallelujah. And we are living with gold to go and worship with our God with the gold that we have. Hallelujah. A time has come. And so, I remember one day we were, we began off with the 300,000, got some office on Vision Plaza, Mombasa Road, paying rent around 33,000 per month. So, three, uh, you pay in advance three months. That's one of 5,000 already gone with the lawyer. I was left with 100,000. I went to Mutindua, got some second hand furniture, and then we started off. The laptop I had, someone broke in. It was 70,000, I had just bought the laptop. Someone took the laptop, so I borrowed one, which I used for six months. One day I was praying. I used to be in the office at 4.35 every morning. So I used to clear my tray. By eight, when staff come in, I have finished my work. I go out to market, okay? And this must be sung clearly, especially to the youth who have been sleeping up to 10 in the morning. A time has come. The amount of poverty you accumulate is correlated with the amount of sleep. A little sleep, a little slumber, is it? So shall your own poverty, not even mine, which means you have an allotment. <laughs> and did you know that the, the dreams, bad dreams normally come in the morning? You know that? Where you dream you are being chased by dogs. Okay. Even in-laws can come in the dream for dowry <laughs> that morning, especially lawyers. And they're asking for chai. <laughs> A time has come. We have been sitting on the fence watching. You know, in this world, when you are seated on the table, you are either the menu or you are the one eating. <laughs> we have been the menu for a long time. <laughs> Do you know the way the politicians start? It's our time to eat. <laughs> it is our time as well. <laughs> to get into the pool of Bethesda, of grace, of economic grace, hallelujah, and deep dive into it. So I remember one day I went into the morning and I, I, I sense a lot putting in my heart and say, go buy enough chairs in the office. And that is foolishness. For the message of the cross is, is foolishness. Faith is the currency of heaven. Praise God. We trade heaven with faith. So you swipe, and Abraham believed, and it was credited to him as unrighteousness. The problem with many of us, there is no credit in the spiritual account of heaven. So you are trying to swipe. Sometimes <laughs> you might swipe and it goes through. That's on the account of mercy. That's only on the account of his mercy are new every morning. So you swear <laughs> because of he, you are his child and the transaction somehow goes through. But we need to go a step further. And Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. And do you know up to now we are still debating? Me and you. We are still debating that account of the promises. When the Bible says a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, whereas it's possible to live wealth, also is a heritage of righteousness. And the Bible says Timothy, his grandmother Lois, had faith, isn't it? The same faith was also in Timothy. So Timothy was swiping an account of righteousness. 
That came through what? His grandmother, Lois. So I remember laying hands, buying empty seats on the, in the office and laying hands in the office on the, on the desks and I was speaking to the desk and I was telling the desk, you, we will have a lot of, and when you do these kind of things, ensure you have closed your doors. <laughs> By wisdom, <laughs> a house is built, isn't it? By knowledge, by knowledge a house is built. By wisdom it is what? Established. So you have to apply what? Wisdom. So I was speaking in tongues and laying and speaking to the desk, to the chairs, and telling the empty desk, we will have a lot of work that people will sit on you. You will not sit here empty. You sit here, the voice of the Lord. <laughs> Within three weeks, we had so many, so much work. The office was full. And we were looking now to buy, to move. I remember I was doing a similar program with Trinity Fellowship. I think it was 20, 2013, 2013 or 20, 2013 in Rondo. And I was doing a similar program. At around five in the morning in my devotion, I heard the word clearly, you shall buy, you, you shall buy, you shall not rent. You shall buy. And then I had the word, you who have no money, come and buy at no, no cost. Isaiah, this is the only kingdom that you transact without cash. As long as you have faith. Hallelujah. A time has come that you, be, you take out your debit card of faith, which is loaded with the currency of the word of God, and you begin to swipe the treasuries of heaven because there are plenty. Hallelujah. So I leave. I go to the breakfast where the, there was a Muzungu who owns that um, rondo, the, the missionaries, and he was... He was hosting a friend of mine called Erastus Quaker. And Erastus was telling me, sharing a testimony how he had bought an office of around quite some million, I don't want to mention. And he was telling me how when he just took that step of faith, what God did in his life. Hallelujah. And so I just kept, like Mary, I kept those things to myself. Some of us, the problem is we testify too early. We even look for opportunities as a prayer item to let people know. <laughs> it is to the king's glory to conceal a matter. Are you getting wisdom? Sometimes it's not, you need to know where to speak to who. And by when, isn't it? Eh, hey, that's why, that's why when Jesus is coming, you know someone was put mute. Yes. What was his name? John, he was put on mute. Do you understand why they were walking silent around the wall of Jericho? It's wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need to know, even when the Lord puts a word in your heart, keep it to yourself. Ask. Get to know, is this a season to share it out? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against rulers, principalities, and powers of darkness. Sometimes when they get to be to be aware when you don't have spiritual grace and capacity or cover for that particular opportunity, you are snuffed off. And you keep on asking what happened. You mature to have capacity to be able to handle that situation, isn't it? And when you speak, when you start to share it out, you know that you have the host of angels around protecting you and protecting the idea. So long story short, uh, that friend of mine asked me, we went into the place um, where he had bought, I saw some place, and I, I felt persuaded that that was ours. 
So I spoke into the land, unto that place, and I declared no, there will be no transaction apart from ours. <laughs> And you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. Hallelujah. And a season has come for you to arise and take your spiritual authority and begin to do what? Decree. Declare what the Lord has laid in your heart. And you know we got to buy that space. We got to expand in that space almost around 120 million worth of space. And last year during COVID, we again bought another space. COVID or no COVID is still on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He does not go and leave. <clears throat> he does not. And the tellers of heaven, the angels, the tellers of heaven, they don't go on maternity leave. They don't go on paternity leave. They are waiting on us. Hallelujah. So we need to create capacity. Tell your neighbor capacity. And how can you create capacity? One way is just look smart. Did you know that just by looking smart, you are, you are likely to attract, you have 70% chance to attract customers your way. And looking smart includes breath, uh, brushing your teeth in the morning, especially men. <laughs> Looking smart, isn't it? Iron your shirt, clean, let the place you are in, you're operating from, look neat, be clean, isn't it? Yeah, be clean. And I will talk a little bit on a number of things. And then prayer. Prayer is key. I will talk about that and understanding your prince, priestly role. In the book of Revelation chapter 5, the Bible says you have been redeemed from every tribe, you are actually no longer a challenging. Say amen. amen. Yes, as long as you are born again, you have been redeemed. You are no longer a lawyer. Say amen. <laughs> oh, you don't agree with this. You have been redeemed. The Bible says so. It is written. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. From every tongue, from every tribe, from every nation. And we have been made as priests unto our Father in heaven to do what? To reign here on earth. You have been redeemed. The purpose of redemption is for you to do what? To reign. And so you need to take, and the Bible says, and we are called, we are called by the name of the living God. You are no longer called by your ancestral father's name. You are called by the name of the living God. You are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. To proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Tell your neighbor, I am redeemed. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. And so you need to take your priestly role. And what is the work of the priests? They transact heaven here on earth. And you know, when, wherever, the law of the priest, whenever the priesthood changes, the law must also change. Hebrews chapter 7. Whenever the priesthood, the priesthood changes, the, the, the law must also change. Let me help you understand that. So there was this thing called the Prince of Persia. That was the priesthood. And Daniel had fasted and prayed and there was no, there was, it was a blockage in the realm of the spirit. And when Daniel prevailed, when the military of the heaven was <laughs> sent and dealt with that particular thing of the Prince of Persia and it had to give way, the territory had to change, the territory had to shift, the spirit domain had to shift and Daniel took charge of the land and the law changed in favor of Daniel and the law changed hallelujah and as long as we arise and so I am challenging you in your place of work how about it becomes a place of worship as a priest hallelujah and that's how we are going to change the laws 
in the marketplace. That's how we are going to pull down the principalities of corruption in the marketplace. You go in your place of work, you take a minute or five minutes and you declare, I am the priest unto the Lord in this place. Every other law you have to bow unto the king of glory. Every other thought that exalts itself against the mind of Christ, we subdue you under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and we leave the name of Jesus in this place. When the priesthood changes, the law must also change. Hallelujah. And we need to have the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor we need to have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Exodus 33, he says that, see, I have put my spirit upon Bezalel, son of Ur, and I have gifted him in all manner of Craftsmanship. The Holy Spirit is not a preacher for ministry here in church. It's also for marketplace. He's our helper. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man that teaches him on how to do what? To profit. The Holy Spirit can actually give you innovation ideas, even in the dreams, even in the visions of the night. The Holy Spirit can lead you. He can guide you in a profitable way. Where people are toiling, the Holy Spirit of God can give you strategic intent and strategic insight on what you must do to enhance your competitive advantage in the marketplace. He is your helper, not only to pray, but also in the marketplace. How about you impress him? I remember one day I was seated in the office and I had, we, we were in need of quite some money. Um, it was, we were, we needed about 2.4 million. That was like in year one of our um, um, existing, existence as an institution. And I had worked, I had been in the office from 4.30 in the morning. I had worked up to around 10. So I took a walk, I was walking as I was praying, just to stretch my, my, my legs. Then I had in my spirit, Call this company now. I did know. So I obeyed. I called them. They were so shocked. They were in the boardroom discussing who can sort us out in this area of need. You know the business we wrote in that particular week? Just one week. We were able to write business of around 3.5 million. Just in one week. The problem, often with many of us, we look, we don't see. With our eyes, we look. But with our inner way, we see. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. What the righteous, what the Lord has in store for the righteous. The Bible says God tells Abraham as far he didn't say as far as you look <laughs> as far as you can discern because opportunities are usually beyond looking are you now getting it? Hallelujah most people are spiritually blind and part of the healing that we need today is that the Lord may touch our hearts so that our eyes, so that we can see clearly. There was this man who was blind and the Lord kept on touching him. And he touched him. He asked him, what do you see? I see men. I see opportunities. When you see people as trees, the likely thing you will do is to cut them down, isn't it? You won't see them as resources. I see people... <laughs> as trees. And the long story short is that if there is one of the prayers you can pray item that we are going to make here is a healing of sight. So that we stop looking. More people have stopped us looking and they have wasted opportunities. Isn't it? In the seeing, you discern. 
as many are as led by the spirit of the living God, then they merit to be the sons of God. When you are led by the spirit of the living God, you function in the dimension of discernment. And discernment, you have the strategic competitive advantage in the marketplace. When many people are using money to do billboards and advertisement, the Holy Spirit is speaking, doing marketing for you. He can instruct the heart of a king wherever they are and direct that decision to come your way. Hallelujah. Embrace him. Embrace him. And then the other principle is, number six, you understand that you are the heir. And so let me do a quick run. My apologies. Time is running. Boy, Jesus. We need to recalibrate our mindset and have a shift in the mindset. Please understand it's extremely okay to be rich. It is very okay. Don't feel apologetic. It's part of the package. This is not prosperity gospel. It is okay. He takes pleasure in the well-being, in the prosperity of his servants. Psalms chapter 36. He takes pleasure in the prosperity. The problem with this poverty mindset is the way we were discipled when we were growing up. You need money, you go to your mother, you kept on hearing, akuna pesa, isn't it? You go to your father, you hear, akuna pesa, isn't it? So you kept on hearing, akuna pesa, akuna pesa, akuna pesa, until it sang in your mind. And faith comes by hearing. You even went to law school and economic school, and you even wrote an exam, and when they asked, resources are scarce, you also answered. Resources are actually scarce. But I want to let you know, that's a lie. Resources are plenty. In my father's, he has blessed us with all manner of spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. And there are plenty. And the Bible says, and our father who is in heaven, he is El Shaddai. His name is El Shaddai, meaning that he is a lot of more than enough. He is our all-sufficient God. Hallelujah. The earth and everything in it belongs to him. So I want us to undo that thinking. Reso pesa iko. Tell your neighbor pesa iko. Iko mingi, isn't it? So resources are not scarce. Only resourceful minds are. I want to repeat that. Resources are not scarce. Only resourceful minds are. And what is a resourceful mindset? It is a mindset that has capacity to resource opportunities from the ecosystem of the opportunities within you. It's a mindset that sees opportunities beyond the looking. That is a resourceful mind. Hallelujah. Resources are not scarce. As we talk, let me tell you, the amount of venture capital and private equities inflow into this country is mind-boggling. They are seeing what we are not seeing. As we are looking, them they are seeing. <laughs> Let me shock you. There is a private equity company. I'm in the financial services sector. They are getting land in Rift Valley, those other sites. They are leasing five acres, five years, a hundred acres minimum. What are they growing? Chili and spices. Those spice crops, isn't it? They have secured markets in India. Because of our weather and our soil is not yet so much polluted with chemicals. And the weather pattern is so good. So they are seeing that. They have already taken several of them. They are growing. They are growing those, those crops and exporting to India and making money while we are here, Tuko Tu. Tuko Tu. Tunasema hakuna pesa. Isn't it? We, can you imagine we as Christians joining those who don't believe? 
agreeing with them that hakuna pesa. We need to have a shift in the mindset. Isn't it? Because as a mind as a man thinks, get so he is. Your thought process determines what you attract your way. You begin to think you have a lot of money, it becomes, isn't it? Let me give you a testimony. There was a time we used to fuel with 50 bob. 50 bob. Kwa mteremuko naweka free. Okay? Have you ever driven with speaking in tongues? <laughs> <laughs> because the gauge is almost off. <laughs> and so you pray in tongues so that at least there is. <laughs> we used to do that. So many times the car stopped, you leave it in there, you push it aside. On the road, you get to the matatu, you go to the meeting room, the boardroom. I used to tell myself there is no parking space in the boardroom. So a car is not of a necessity. What is required in the boardroom is my brain to sort their problem in exchange for value. So this thing like, oh, my car has broken down. Let's meet another day. That is a mindset of retrogression. Park the car, go for the opportunity. <laughs> People will not even ask, how did you get here? Or where did you park your car? Isn't it? They don't care, isn't it? As long as you sort them out. Praise God. Yeah. So we need to have a shift here. While I was fueling with 50 people, people used to ask me, can you loan me with 5 million? I never used to say, Sina. I used to say, not now. Praise God. I, 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 I picked it that they understood the level that I'm supposed to be operating from and they are agreeing with scripture in my life that I shall be a lender to the nations and I will not be a borrower. Hallelujah. And they were prophesying. <laughs> Praise God. What has been your language in your business? We need to change this language. We need to change our language and speak the language of your destiny. Hallelujah. So in the Bible, we have so many people who are rich. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, David, and you can have given the scriptural references. And we also now need your name to be on that order as well. <laughs> we also need your name to be also there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And why do we need to have money in the church to fund the Great Commission? There is revival. Africa is going to export the gospel to Europe. That is going to happen. But we need money, isn't it? Yeah, you can't walk. My sister, today, if you walk to Europe, you will arrive. I'm not so sure. If you, you will arrive at retirement age. <laughs> if that will happen, isn't it? But we have to redeem time, isn't it? If Pastor Ibrahim here can have, why do we feel guilty when a pastor has a chopper and we don't feel guilty when a politician has a chopper? What, 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 what is the problem? Mindset, isn't it? That is okay for the politician to redeem time by hoping from one county to the other and it's not okay for the pastor to use a chopper to redeem time because souls are perishing. The mindset, a time has come. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. A time has come for a mindset to change. But you know, we need resources. 
We need billionaires by way of not even Kenya shillings. Me, I changed. USD billionaires. Me, I changed. <laughs> US dollar denomination. If you want to be a dollar, a billionaire in Zim dollar, that's okay. If you want to be a billionaire according to your faith, my brother, me, I will not dis dispute. According, everyone according to their faith. But you also have a blank check to write what you want. This is the only kingdom that gives you a blank check. You ask is to write, to take, to take the pen and write. Hallelujah. So we need, thank you. We need to have a shift in the mindset. A shift, if a brother gets a four or five uh, brothers here, it's okay. It's okay, so that they can help in weddings. Ask some people here when they are doing weddings, do you know how they fast and pray for cars for weddings? Huh? And, and they can... We get them from Nairobi. Yeah. But we need to have them here as well, isn't it? Yeah, me, I'm trusting God that our pastors will have choppers. Say amen, pastor. <laughs> You know, the other day I was going to, I went in the morning, I spent like four hours going to Mombasa, and then I arrived in the evening, I had a service, then the following day I had a service, and then coming back five hours or so. And I was so fatigued. And I'm like, if I had a job, I would have just gone there in the morning, I did whatever, I finished in 40. There, I think the politicians are doing 45 minutes from one county to the other, isn't it? Yeah, let's redeem time as well for the souls, isn't it? It's okay to be rich. Tell your neighbor it's okay to be filthy, filthy, filthy. <laughs> Just in case you are doubting my theology, the Bible says, and the man waxed great and was extremely rich. You know that man? What was his name? Isaac. Isaac. Hallelujah. He waxed great. And he was extremely rich. We need a few Isaacs. Bless, praise God. There was a time I was doing some work in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I like using this example. So this particular church is called the City of David. Uh, the late Mans Monroe used to come there a few times when I was working there. I was working in Stanbic IPTC Bank. Uh, doing some consultancy project there. And they were doing a project worth of around 130 million nairas. By then, by way of exchange, Kenya shilling was around 80 million. The first Sunday, the pastor announced requiring eight, that kind of money. The second Sunday, he was on the pulpit saying, on the altar saying, Pesa imetosha musilete. Then I remembered how our pastors in Kenya, God have mercy. They fast. You push. You announce. You re-announce. You reaffirm. You even quote scriptures. I met one brother there. He owned the equivalent of General Motors. He was a Sunday school teacher. He was... He was kneeling down and worshiping and praising the name of the Lord and speaking in tongues. Then I thought of our brothers who have, Ame Barikiwa to Nawan Prado. He used to come for Kesha. He stopped. And here is our message today. You shall remember. And when you have built houses, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and you have settled in them. Remember, do not forget. Can I help you? It is in the place of remembrance that the grace of the covenant that made provision is sustained. Hallelujah. In the place of remembrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know there is some people here we have some people here, their grace was disconnected because they told themselves, it was by my own might and power that gave me this wealth. 
But today, as they come back to their spiritual senses, like the prodigal son, they are going back to the father. They are going back to the promise. They are going back to the place of the covenant. They are going back. Hallelujah. Rama, senderema, kayandarama. They are being reconnected back. And their spiritual wells that have been shut by the Philistines, they are being opened again. Hallelujah. We need, it is God's pleasure to take, he take, God takes pleasure in, 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 our, in our economic well-being. And also to reign here on earth as priests and kings. I have never seen a poor king. In fact, one of the reasons why people pay loyalty to a king is because of wealth. Do you remember Solomon? And this, this lady, the, the, what was he from, from? Ethiopia, yes, and she was mesmerized. <laughs> Can you imagine the kind of evangelism that Solomon did because of just the opulence of wealth? You know, there are some things you don't need even to announce the God you see. People just need to see, isn't it? Once they just see, they can then start to believe the God we represent. Hallelujah. Gold is good. Tell your neighbor, gold is good. Get used to it here because in heaven are streets of gold, my sister. You need to get used to it. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And also to share God's blessing in the need. You can't be. Once you have been blessed with abundance, out of the abundance that you have, then you can be a blessing to the rest, isn't it? Hallelujah. And then now, let me just quickly run. My time is gone. A Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall make your way straight. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, a few things that I wanted also to speak around is that money flows where there is vision and purpose. Because it is in your vision that there is provision. Do you know provision? Provision is two words. Support for the vision. Hallelujah. In the book of Habakkuk, the Bible says, write down a vision. Although it tarries, it will surely do what? Come to pass. Ask your neighbor, do you have a vision? Ask him, don't, don't, uh, don't uh, fear. Uh, Pastor Ibrahim, you can ask me. I have a vision, <laughs> you have a vision. <laughs> Do you have a vision? Can I tell you something? Praise God. When the Bible says every morning, his grace and mercy are new every morning, the grace of God, the, the Bible says, and the God of all grace, which means there are dimensions of grace. And grace is ministered to us by the angels of the living God. So every morning, angels are sent here on earth. They check who you are konanini, akotu, ana vision, akotu, anangangana. They pass. They check now who is next, who has a vision. Hallelujah. When they check this one has a vision, they go and take the resources in the ecosystem of economic systems and begin to support because it's in your, see, in your vision, you have your provision. They start to make provision for the vision. So you need to have a vision. Tell your neighbor you need to have a vision. And when you have a vision, ensure that your vision is so big that you are so sure you will fail unless the Lord helps you. Don't have petty cash dreams. Petty cash dreams will only pull petty cash resources. Hallelujah. You need to have a vision that draws the attention of heaven. And when there is a cabinet meeting in heaven, the council of heaven, they will say, who is that? Who is that? Hallelujah. Who is that? Me, I, a time has come to rewrite the script. There is only European countries, companies that come to buy companies in Africa. Me, I have changed that script. We are going to buy companies in Europe. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our season to arise has come. Hallelujah. The Bible says the, for, the sons of the foreigners so that this scripture will come to pass. The sons of the foreigners shall till our land. So I am not growing the company to sell. I change. That's a mindset of poverty. <clears throat> I am growing to acquire more in Europe. <laughs> Just to prove that our God is faithful. He raises the humble from the dusty places of Africa. And he makes them to sit in high places with kings. Hallelujah. And as a result, I don't play sympathy or empathy with the Europeans. I don't. When we meet with them, I imagine we are, I am meeting with them, I am on a higher table of grace because the word of God tells me I am seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I don't sit there as a beggar. We, we need to refuse this narrative of free things. And by the way, in business, as a Christian, don't be acclimatized to free things. We exchange and sustain poverty through free things. We exchange and sustain poverty. We trade poverty through free things. But we earn value. We create value sustainably when we exchange value. If someone does something, even gives you a lift, next time get some boga from your garden, give him. You are exchanging value. Hallelujah. We are refusing this free things mindset because the free things graduates to the sense of entitlement. And everything is by God's grace and mercy. Hallelujah. So we need to change. So tell your neighbor vision. I read Rick Warren, Purpose Driven Life, some 20 years plus. I wrote down my purpose. I did my strategic plan. When the politicians have mpango ya 2022, I also ni mechipanga. See, mimi na yesu tu mechipanga. Because I am in him, isn't it? And the beauty is that in him, all things they hold together, including my vision. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he is the prince of peace. Hallelujah. Eh, hey, usiache kupangwa na politicians. Watch out, Pangwe na neno la mungu. Because that is a safe place to be. His promises are yes and amen. And some of you have bought into the lies of those manifestos. There is a manifesto I came to announce. There is a manifesto, my brother, that never fails. And that is a manifesto that is underwritten by the blood of the Lamb of God. It is guaranteed. Hallelujah. And that is a manifesto of the promises of God's word. That is a manifesto that never fails. He never, he is watching over his word. He will perform me. He will not fail. Hallelujah. And someone is still wondering what this is. I, I still have to convince you. Hallelujah. Rama Senderebo. Ephesians chapter 1. And the Bible says in verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him. Who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Everything is working to the counsel of his will. That we who first, first trusted in Christ, we did not trust in a politician. We first trusted in Christ, should be to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. In him, you also trusted all after you heard the word of truth. Hallelujah. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise. 
who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The Holy Ghost guarantees your promises. The Holy Ghost guarantees that is the difference between the other manifestos and this manifesto. This one has a guarantee of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need to have a vision and purpose. I want to challenge you today, go and attempt and write a vision for your family. And after you have done a vision, please also go a step further and define within what value system as a family you are going to earn wealth. The problem, I do a lot of financial planning for families, and it's a sad situation. You get children who have no idea what to do with the billion that their father has left with them. And I wanted to submit to us today, it is not so much what we leave for our children, it is what we leave in them. It is what we live in them. Because most of them are empty inside. When you come to church, they go to church with their parents. They are praying as their parents are praying for long life. Then they are praying another prayer. Because they are a barrier to access to wealth. Sumuchukwa arakaraka. Number two, pesa haipendi kuenda mahali kuna kelele na makasiriko. Tatoroka. Nafikiria si scriptural, nitakuonyesha kwa biblia. Mtecha kija, smile. Waelewa? Hey, smile. As you smile, they will smile at you. Sim teja ni pesa inakuja. Please understand that anything you'll ever get through in this world, it will be through another human being. That's why the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love. Yes. Hallelujah. So you need to be a person of peace. Resources stay, they calm down and stay for a little while when it is a tranquil, peaceful environment. Okay, let me now help you in the scripture. He gives perfect peace to him whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. Okay? Have you ever asked why in the Old Testament the Levitical blessing was the peace, the shalom? When an environment has peace, there is production. When your matatu has peace, it doesn't, you don't spend a lot of money in the garage it will be at peace to serve the purpose. The Bible says Jesus is the Prince of Peace. In him all things hold together. Hallelujah. So when you go to your office, when you go to your business, declare shalom. Declare peace. When the workers are at peace with you in the environment, they will also be fruitful, isn't it? When the customers are at peace, they will even negotiate less. They will even feel guilty to negotiate. When you tell them this guy is going for two million, they will say, okay, I, I know my brother thinks the dollar has gone up and I understand. Here is the money. No negotiation. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor peace. peace. Okay? Yeah, peace. Okay. So the last one is that you need resources grow where they are appreciated. When you keep complaining about money, it will complain about you and go. 
What you appreciate will appreciate. What you don't appreciate will depreciate in value. Waelewa? And by the way, yeah. So, partly what is happening is, hey, okay. So, grace impartation and gets are being subdued. And those who have ears will understand what I am saying. Yeah, things are clearing. The scepter of the wicked that was abiding on people's land, shoop, shoop. A time has come, hallelujah, 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 shoop. Shoop. Hallelujah. Wow. I like it. I like it. These transactions happening. Yeah. Transactions are happening. People are being restored. Dreams that were shut. They are being revived. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Places that they suffered rejection. Because of the dispensation of God's mercy, favor is coming. And the favor the mercy gets are speaking on their behalf. And they are rising like the four labors. They are beginning to walk again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing even on the academic credentials and the spiritual beacons of limitations. Rama, senderebo koyanda rama. They are being broken. Those limitations over their businesses. They are being broken in the name of Jesus Christ. We are rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the covenant of the evil priesthood over their resources is now broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lose their resources. Jesus says no in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 It's happening. It is happening. It is happening. Wow. Yeah. Garment of favor. Hallelujah. Garment of favor for beauty. Hallelujah. Garment of favor over the businesses. Hallelujah. Garment of favor over ministries. It is grace impartation. Garment of favor. Hallelujah. Garment of favor over their words. So that their words will impart grace to the customers. Even to transact billions in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Destinies being, hallelujah, names being healed in the realm of the spirit. Come into favor. But money needs to trust you. And don't worry, we will have those things. All we do is obey and do what the Lord lays in our hearts. Because until you transact in the realm of the spirit, you can't transact in the natural. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But money needs to trust you to come your way. And what are the trust components? One is competency. You need to be so good at what you do. The problem sometimes is we have a lot of very honestly and genuinely incompetent brethren in the church. They are, they, they are honestly incompetent. <laughs> and they want value, isn't it? We have to be so good. We are representing a kingdom of excellence. Isn't it? So, and the Bible says, and Daniel were found to be 10 times better, isn't it? We better, even if it is going back to school, go and be found to be 10 times better, isn't it? 
So we have prayed, pastor has prayed, there is grace. But even on grace, that grace is now functional within your calling. But you amplify the efficiency of your calling and your gifting through training so that you are approved, isn't it? And now when you, you have competency, tied up with good character, which is your behavior, you keep your what, you are honest, and then the last one is credibility. You earn trust. That's the infrastructure of how money flows your way. Whether you are in the financial services sector, whether you are in the agri sector, spend an hour a day to learn something around your trade so that you get consistently better. Isn't it? And when you improve in what you are, so you are adding competency, you are mixing it with God's grace and favor, with faith, you get amazing results. I can also tell you for free that God's grace is not, never wasted. And that's why oil stopped when the empty vessels were full. Which means when you are at the elastic level of your competency, the grace stops. So sometimes there are no demons. It's just that you, are, <laughs> you need to go back to school. <laughs> are we together? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So that we can be sharper as we, we cut, isn't it? We are efficient, isn't it? Eh, hey. hallelujah, hallelujah. So, um, I will jump all this, but beautiful stuff. Wow, yeah, so I, I was just saying, the character traits that you need to look at is honesty. You need to be diligent, and I have given the scriptures there. There is um, perseverance, patience, self-control, especially self-control. There are moments you'll actually get a lot of money, especially those of you in consultancy. But don't allow yourself to be defined by economic resources. You cheapen the grace of God in your life. You know, to be defined by the car you, you drive is cheap. Because when it depreciates in value, what we call straight line depreciation, <laughs> you also lose value. That's why the Bible says, put your treasures where there is no corruption. Hallelujah. Where there is no moth or rust, there there is retention of value. Praise God. Uh, so don't change your language. When, uh, you, when you start to twain you, your accent, just because of 500,000 contract you got to do a road, a maram road, don't. Don't. 500,000. I have met billionaires in USD. They kneel, they speak in tongues. In some of my meetings, Praise God. Hey, there is another level, my brother, that we need to go, me and you. There is another level. Vanessa Sifiwe. So, this bit of obedience, when God tells you the secret of God's favor is when the Lord can trust you. That he can entrust you with 20 billion and you will bring tithe of how much, my sister? Eh? Two, two billion. Two billion tithe without fasting and praying to inquire of the Lord. <laughs> you will be you will be obedient, isn't it? And if he tells you I want this money this way, you just obey. You are only a steward of the heavenly resources, isn't it? Banaesa Sifiwe. Hallelujah. Okay, and then I have given the, then there is, um, when a man's ways please a lot, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. 
That is peace. Hallelujah. I will give peace in the land, Leviticus 26 verse 6, and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will get, I will read the land of evil beasts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so now I just want to quickly, maybe in 10 minutes and I end. I'm sorry I have taken a lot of time. I want you to ask your neighbor, if money was your spouse, how would you describe the relationship? <laughs> and we want honest answers. I think we begin with senior pastor, isn't it? <laughs> Let's not embarrass our pastor. <laughs> Anyone who wants to volunteer to answer this, in these 10 minutes I want to stop and I want to get into prayer. Anyone? Anyone? Just how? Just it's just give us your yes. Okay, yes, faith. Yeah. Mm. I'll say what my neighbor said because I think it's funny. She said Anasumbua. <laughs> Let's appreciate faith. Faith is my daughter. <coughs> yeah. Money Anasumbua, isn't it? Yeah. And and, and I can tell you. There are many people in divorced relationship with money. <laughs> it's just that they haven't filed divorce cases. But it, it, Alienda Kitambo, Ayuko. Isn't it? So I just want to quickly learn through um, that as you work out your money plan, assess where you are, create a budget that suits your goals. Set your financial goals that are realistic, smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Work out a plan that you seek to implement that. But I also want to make mention that um, align capacity to your ambition. Because sometimes you have, when we are too ambitious, and I want to balance wisdom on this, because I don't want to negate what I earlier said. You still have a big dream, isn't it? But you keep growing capacity. You stay the course, isn't it? You are still staying the course. You are going. You are moving. Uh, so you need to align capacity to your ambition. And sometimes we are carrying a lot of packages. What are those packages? When the Lord is saying, see, I am doing a new thing, you don't want to believe because of so-and-so who disappointed you in business. You partnered with a brother or a sister, you are terribly disappointed. I want to let you know that when the Lord says it's a new thing, it's a new thing. Dive in that grace. Don't argue. Just move on. Hallelujah. And sometimes also, we are so burdened with the financial pressures, especially in the communities around this side, where the cousin of the neighbor of, the, of your brother is still a relative. You still need to help them financially. We call it a black tax in the financial services sector. Black tax refers to the levels of dependency you are supporting. So they are also entitled to your money. I know this is not a very kind uh, statement to mention in a congregation, but I'm also sharing from a point of experience, okay? Yeah, from a point of experience. Once you have paid your tithes, once you have paid your offerings, and you have a line to also on your budget to support the needy, including your family members, and that line has been exhausted, don't be pushed to borrow to please people. Don't attempt to take the place of God in people's life. Allow them to experience for themselves as well God's faithfulness. Allow them chance to trust God, just like you are doing. In their lives, the opportunity to grow their faith. In the Lord, their ever-present help as their provision. Do not take the place of God <laughs> because most people, financial, especially firstborns in their families, even marriages has collapsed because of this story. 
You finish paying school fees for your second born, for your third born, for your fourth born, and now you wake up, you are age 50, and you are still in a plot, you are paying rent. And the wife starts asking, Kwani kunaendangaji? <laughs> Isn't it? So much as you are helping, it's okay to help, but help with balanced wisdom. Are we together? And those are some of the packages that you may need to relook at. Now, if you are here now, Konadenia mtu, omba msama. Because dawa ya deni ni kufanya nini? Eh, that we should not owe anyone any except love. There's a guy called Onoka in a book written by Chino and Chepe, Things Fall Apart. Onoka, if he takes a thousand from you, he used to draw a line of a thousand on the wall. If he takes 10,000, he draws a taller line. So you of 1,000, if you go to Onoka and say, Give me my money. He will show you. Now, na him refi ya elf kumi. He ata si chaguza na yako ni fupi. Gojea. Even when the sun shines, it shines first on the taller people before it shines on the shorter one. That's how Noka was doing his management of Madeni. Now, the grace for financial well-being requires you to be honest including if you borrowed, and uh, pre, brother, if you are here and you say, nipatie tu shilinki elf moja au miatano, takurudishia jion, and you know very well you will not return. Don't lie. Don't lie. Okay? If you know you will not return at, at, in the evening, <laughs> don't say I'll return in the evening. I would rather you say just help me, isn't it? Isn't it? Eh. Yeah. But don't say by tomorrow. And then tomorrow reaches, you are not able to return the 500 shillings. But today we also want to pray around that issue. That the Lord will have mercy on us, forgive us, restore the bond of peace. Because where unity prevails, he commands a blessing. Isn't it? And when he commands, even in the body of Christ, when he commands a blessing, limitations are removed. We begin to flourish. Hallelujah. So I won't do all this because of time. Wow. So you need to, I think I, I feel like I should speak into this. When you have a vision, the vision needs to have pillars that hold it. And how you do it is that, uh, for me, this, this was for me. I did my SWOT analysis in four dimensions. SWOT analysis in four dimensions. Spiritual capital, Financial capital, social capital, and knowledge capital. You build the level of self-awareness because when you now do the swatting, you are now able to set goals, even from a prayer perspective, that are going to be aligned to the mission of your purpose. Let me help you understand why social capital is. It took a Jonathan for David to be at the palace. How far you go in life is determined by the people you walk with. And sometimes if you keep on hanging around with guys who are woye, woye, your life will be woye. Yeah, your life will just be woye. Okay? You need to also, yes, I'm not saying we break the unity in the church, but also you need people who can inspire. Yes, you are working at this level, but you need to connect with people who can pull you up, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in business or mentorship or coaching. You need to move out of, if you are going to work with chickens, you, need, you will become one fat chicken who will become the menu. You need to, to rise and begin also you, you, to work with, with eagles, isn't it? Praise God. Yeah, so you need to be tired of some seasons and situations so that those seasons and situations are tired of you. And that includes changing your social capital. Your social capital determines your network. It is in your networks you have your net worth. 
It's in your networks that you access your net worth. In your networks, you have the infrastructure to access your net worth. Your social capital determines your spiritual language as well and spiritual capital as well. Blessed is a man who does not dwell in the counsel of the wicked. He delights in the law of the Lord day and night. He reflects on it. He is like a tree planted. And out of season and in season, he is fruitful. Isn't it? Social capital. Who do you work with? Sometimes I call people and you hear, mom, you hear a ringtone. Ringtone. The ringtone, yes, especially the youth. So you are calling them for an interview and the ringtone is, ooh-wee, ooh-wee. And you are calling the youth for an interview. God have mercy on our youth. Isn't it? Or you hear a ringtone like, Kama ni Dennis Chukui. <laughs> now this is the HR manager calling <laughs> for an interview for a credit manager. Will you be invited? And you know where we get those things? is in our social language, social networks, isn't it? So we need to change that as well. Our social capital determines also our aspirations, our thinking patterns, our social capital. Life is intentional. And so after you have mapped out the sorting, then you can now set goals and that becomes your life strategic plan, either for a family or for yourself. Okay? So you have the vision, and so you are going to ask, what are you, what are you going to do about, after the awareness of sorting, what are you going to do about your so, social capital? So you become intentional in terms of how, even how you choose friends and how you access and networking. Okay? What are you going to do? And you put your goals and your objectives on that. And how is the initiatives? What are the objectives? Then you go to your spiritual capital. Maybe you are not prayerful. That's your weakness. So then you begin. Maybe part of the adjustment is I need mentorship on prayer. I need to, to join the intercessory team, isn't it? Or I need to... Uh, to if I if, if it I am struggling to pray alone, I need to make time where people are praying in church and join them. Maybe I'm weak in reading the Word of God. I need to join a Bible reading uh, club or something of the sort, isn't it? And all this spiritual capital generates grace, but which is then manifested and expressed through social capital. Okay, let me help you understand. If you are walking around with guys who use Nduthi, Nduthi, you know Nduthi, and you are in a group of people like here, and Pastor is telling you, recently I was in the UK, and, you, and, you, and I, we were flying, and you are saying, recently I was on Nduthi. Let me tell you, the people, your language determines who listens to you. Isn't it? Yeah. And what are some of the things you can do around spiritual capital? It has just to do with even the books you read, social capital, isn't it? The things you watch on YouTube, social capital. Okay, you learn from those people. The places you go to socialize. How about even some of the nice, nice places in this place? You need to walk there so that they know that you have arrived as a king and a priest. Those places like Rubamol, like what is that place called? Java. Go there. I know the, the tower there or the cup of tea costs how much? Eh? So for those of you who've been there, it's around 250 shillings, isn't it? I know the lawyers here are thinking, yo, yo, 250. <laughs> chai? No, no, no. Sio, yo, yo, pesa. Ni, 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 ni tamos. <laughs> You are getting to be in the space of the language of money. You get? Eh, building awareness of even how people who have money sit. They cross their legs, they like this, swing like this, like this, relaxed. 
so that you know how to drink that cup of tea, the small one. You don't t- take it like this at a go. It is for fellowship, for transactions. Then you now set up goals that align. For each pillar, you set goals. Life is intentional. Then you bring it to pastor to pray with you. Say, pastor, I am trusting God for this. Isn't it? Trust in the Lord with all. Lean not in all your ways, in all your planning. Acknowledge him. How do you acknowledge him? You say, pastor, I am trusting God. Would you pray with me on these plans? Isn't it? Hallelujah. I now need to stop. I think I'll jump all this. I think I just need to mention one thing. Be a person of trust. I got into Steve Covey. In the equation of trust, he says, people who are, who are more trustworthy, they attract resources quickly, cheaply. When your trust level quotient is high in the ecosystem of resources, you pull resources quickly, cheaply. So you need, and I mentioned, what are the components of trust? You need to be a person of competency, aligned with character and credibility. Okay? Okay. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And someone here is looking at forming a board for your company. So here you have six C's, maybe, on how you will select them. Character, competency, credibility, okay? They need to complement the skill you don't have. And the fifth one, chemistry. Stroke, Christ, stroke, shared value system. Two cannot work together unless they agree. Okay? Yeah. So let me, let me just do this last one. So you need to practice gratitude. And we've also talked about that you need to be a time manager of resources. Time is a resource and you need to, don't eat to finish. Whenever resources come your way, put aside for the future as well, isn't it? Don't eat to finish. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, don't eat to finish. You know, unfortunately, people who remain poor, they generally eat to finish. Every end of the month, God gives you a fruit. And the fruit is a seed. The poor man eats the fruit, swallows the seed, looks for where the fruit came from. They cut it, they burn. They even uproot and burn. For the rich, they only eat the seed, eh? the fruit. The seed they plant for more money, trees. George S. Carlson in his book, The Richest Man in Babylon, he talks about... um, when you, people who create wealth, they sustainably have 10% uh, of their money put aside for the future, 10% of their resources. So no, it went off. I actually wanted just to, uh, I have a calculator, maybe I'll try and do that tomorrow. It's uh, because of time, we'll leave it. But I wanted just to show you so that some of you can be so annoyed with yourself because of some of the things that you've been doing. Let's take, for example, someone who has been religiously paying rent faithfully to the landlord, 30,000 per month, for maybe 20, 30 years. If that rent was an investment at a return of around 12%, just 30,000, the future value of that is in excess of 100 million. Just little, little. Little, little, isn't it? And then we keep saying, Atuna Pesa. Atuna Pesa. But Pesa Iko, isn't it? 
Yeah. So don't eat to finish. And one way to adjust is how about this particular year? You make a resolution. You are no longer going to be a tenant. Praise God. Eh? Hey, even with the little you have, you can trust God and say, I will go and look for land even if it's a point. But it's even if I begin off with Mabati, the Lord is watching over me. He is my security. Unless the Lord watches over a city, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the watchmen, they do what? They watch in vain. Uh, then you begin there. With, with, with the one, 200,000, you have your own small place. And you begin from there so that you don't pay rent. And I, I, I wish I had, I could show you with projections, with numbers, you will be so, you will be so shocked with the amount of money you waste on rent. And I want to challenge us as like the four labors, you may be feeling like you are crippled. You have been in those needy gates, but the, you have been a baker in those city gates, but begin to walk to your destiny. Hallelujah. Begin to walk to your destiny. As you begin to walk, the Lord is saying, mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Walk into your future. And you, as you begin to walk, the Lord is amplifying the footsteps of your faith, communicating to the camp of your enemies, and the fear of the Lord shall come upon them, witnessing into their heart that you are coming for your land. Because the word of God says, and the scepter of the wicked shall not abide on the land allotted to the righteous. And there are people here who are going to relocate. Suddenly, they are going to get into their place that the Lord ordained them to be, even in their own land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.